this video let's have a look at the conditions that we need to have for the time series to have the best linear unbiased estimators so the first of all linear parameters this is the same as we used to have with cross-sectional data what does linear parameters mean well it means that the effects from the independent variable like here price and assets those effects which are measured by the slope coefficients beta 1 and beta 2 must have a linear effect on the outcome variable so beta 1 has a linear effect on sales beta 2 has a linear effect on sales as well now we could have we could have a quadratic effect from the independent variables so it might be that we can have here price squared or asset squared okay the variable in itself is going to be to the power of two meaning that we're going to have a quadratic effect so graphically it might look something like this this is going to be sales this is going to be our price so we will have we will have a quadratic relationship between them looking like that meaning that for a certain range when price goes up sales goes up but beyond a certain range because the price is becoming too high so the jeans are too expensive people buy less and less of it so the sales are actually going down and that's you know a logical thought to have so we are still having a linear parameters the slope coefficients in themselves have a linear relationship on the outcome variables the only difference that we can have is that the independent variables can be can be measured in a polynomial manner we could have logarithmic effects and so on so what we must not have what's not linear is the multiplication of the parameters so if we have beta 1 times beta 2 or we have effects like beta 1 to the power of 2 that's not acceptable that's called non-linear parameters and that's violating violating one of the conditions for time series so linear parameters is one let's do one more in this video the other one would be the zero conditional mean of error which we also had in uh, cross section so again we always have to keep in mind the analogies so that we know that uh, you know they're all very similar it's not like we're reinventing the wheel or learning new stuff all the same is just adjusting along the way so zero conditional mean of error Condi let me call that CME to just you know this zero conditional mean of error what does zero conditional mean of error it means that we have it means that we have an expected value of the error term equals to zero and this is how we show it mathematically the expected value of the error term at a certain point in time given any independent variable at any point in time so let's call that xi any independent variable at any point in time let's call that any point in time for instance m must be equal to zero again let me just write this indexes you know to know what we what we're trying to say the point is any any independent variable that we have so we could take here we could take here price assets we have we can have three more independent variables any independent variable that we can have is not going to help us predict above the regression line or below whatever error term we're going to have must be randomly distributed across the regression line this is exactly the same way that we had with cross section so over here this is any error at any point in time must have an expected value equal to zero must be randomly distributed uniformly distributed across the regression line for any given independent variable so this stays for any given independent variable given independent variable and m stays for any point in time because recall that our example we just gave it for 2017 for the sake of the example but we might use the same regression for 2015 or 1999 so any point in time this holds for any point in time that we are dealing with any point in time anyway hope this makes sense in the next video we go to the next ones